I'll just pray for us and we'll get started with the night. Uh, Father, we thank you so much that in your presence there's fullness of joy. In your presence there's no fear, for perfect love casts out all fear. And in your presence we know that we are loved, we are embraced, we are spoken to in a way that we can fully understand. So we thank you, God, that this is the kind of father that you are. This is kind of people that you are raising up for yourself. And I pray, God, that tonight... It wouldn't just be like arts and crafts. You know, it's not just going to be a time for us to uh, do something that we haven't done for a long time or exercise our, the, our arts and crafts that we haven't picked up since elementary school. We, what we're trying to do here tonight simply is to hear your voice and respond to you in a way that you are leading us to tonight. So we thank you, Father, for this open door. We thank you, Father, for the freedom that is in your presence. We love you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So it's really great to have more different people come out every month, and I feel like different topics draw in different kind of people, so I'm really excited uh, to see some new faces here. Please take some time to get to know one another, and uh, we're hoping to create kind of like a community where it's like this becomes like a safe haven for us to grow closer with the Lord. So for tonight, regarding prophetic worship and creativity, we're going to start with some biblical foundations first. So what are some biblical foundations for prophetic worship and creativity? It sounds kind of ominous, like, ooh, like you have to be like one of God's really like highly chosen people to be able to talk about this kind of stuff. But I want to kind of dispel that kind of myth, and I want to make it accessible to all of God's people in the way that God intended it to be. So first thing, uh, we're going to go through four different points very quickly. It's very simple. Number one is God speaks. God speaks. I don't know how you were raised up and uh, what kind of Christian background you had, but I grew up thinking that God has ceased to speak other than through the Bible. So I was very uncomfortable with people saying that he can actually speak into my personal circumstances right now. Uh, He could say something that is maybe in line with scripture, but is not like an actual verse in scripture. I was very uncomfortable just entertaining that idea. Uh, But in order for us to understand prophetic worship and creativity, we have to come to terms with the fact that we worship a God that is alive, and he's still speaking to his people. Two is we were made to hear. I think there's so much fear at times in us. We're like, I'm not prophetic enough, or I can't hear, or there's so much pressure that we put upon ourselves. But the very simple fact is that we were made to hear. We were designed to hear. That's part of the way that God created us. He made us to be able to hear the sound of his voice. Number three is we're called to cultivate our hearing ability. Sometimes we feel like our starting point needs to be like, Moses on Mount Sinai, like that's our starting point. And we need to be able to hear the word of God. We need to see clouds, you know, gathering around us and hear thunder and lightning. No, like it's, we begin in just like any other gifting that we are given, we begin in a point where God plants a seed, gives us enough faith to begin to cultivate a gift that needs to be sharpened, that needs to be developed and grown into as well. So hopefully tonight, there is no like, oh my gosh, they're super prophetic. I am just like mediocre prophetic, and they're like totally not. You know, that's not what we're here to do tonight. All of us are created to hear, and all of us are on this journey of cultivating this gift that God has given us. And four is God promises his spirit in greater measure. This is a promise that God has given us. Now we're going to go into each and every one of these four. Number one, God speaks. This is a pretty cool picture that I I found on the internet. This is kind of talking from uh, Psalm 29, verses 3 and 4. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. And so this is a picture of how God manifests his voice. Sometimes it is in the quiet whisper, in in the stillness, and sometimes it's in the roaring thunder. But God always makes his makes it manifest and uh, perceptible to his people. Jeremiah 1.4, among many other passages in scripture, it says, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, this is Jeremiah's testimony. This is him saying, like, this is how I ended up where I am today as a prophet of God. His word came to me. I wasn't, like, striving for it. I wasn't fasting for 40 days and 40 nights in order to hear the voice of God. The word of the Lord came to me. And that's how we should approach prophecy and hearing God's voice as well. 
And in Exodus 3 and 4, uh, 3, uh, verse 4, this is how Moses was called from the burning bush. It says, when the Lord saw that, he turned aside to see. So God created a diversion, like for him to be like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> like right here, like a burning bush. And then when he turned around to look at that, God called to him out of the bush saying, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. So God is the one who takes initiative. I think we have to break off this kind of feeling that we have of like, man, I have to like earn my way into hearing God's voice. That's not biblical. God has given us an ability to hear his voice, and he's the one who initiates for us. Now, second, the same way that God speaks, we are also made to hear. John 10, 3 says, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. His sheep are able to recognize his voice. And if a sheep that doesn't have education or intellect or even the Bible, if they can recognize their shepherd's voice, I feel like us here who have community, who have pastors, who have the word, we can definitely hear the voice of God. Now in Luke 24, 31 to 32, this is in the account of the disciples uh, on the road to Emmaus. And their, it says their eyes were opened and they recognized him. So they recognized Jesus and he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? So many times we, in retrospect, realize like, oh my goodness, that was the Lord speaking loud and clear to me. I just didn't recognize it at the time and finally um, it's kind of like a word of uh, I guess somewhat caution at the very end it says uh, Paul urges Corinthians to seek this gift the gift of prophecy he says everybody you should be seeking this gift it's not an evil thing it's not an arrogant thing to seek after these things but he urges all believers to seek this gift while also acknowledging that not all are prophets so i cannot get into this too deeply, uh, but the office of a prophet and the spirit of prophecy or something we would also call like simple prophecy or um, uh, just impressions or different subtle ways in which God speaks to us, they are different gradients or in a scale of the prophetic gifting. If you guys want to learn a little bit more about that, a good uh, reference book that I, I could point you to is uh, Mike Bickle's Growing in the Prophetic. It's, it's a really like down to earth uh, book that is very straightforward about, you know, it's not this crazy thing that's only for a few select people, but it's for every believer and their different gradients. And here's how you can actually exercise it more and you can grow in it more. So that's a, a good reference to just keep in mind. So that's uh, the first one was God speaks. Second was we are made to hear. Third is we are called to cultivate our spiritual gifts. So in Matthew chapter 25 when we're talking about the parable of the talents it, it it's talking about the kingdom of God and it says for it will be like a man going on a journey so God going for a while like Jesus leaving for a while and entrusting to his people something entrusting to them his property to one he gave five talents to another two to another one to each according to his ability then he went away and he who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them and he made five talents more etc cetera, etc cetera. you know how the the parable goes this is just to remind you that whatever god has given you if it's a lot or if it's just a little bit however much you're given you're still called to steward i think many times we're like oh it's just not a big gift it's just a little bit Ah, uh, like I have more important things that I should be focusing on. And no, like we're going to be held account to whatever we were given. So even if it was a little bit, that's the little bit that we we're called to still steward and still multiply as well. So this is hopefully an encouragement to you. You don't need to be the five talents guy in order to multiply. You can be the one talents guy and still multiply and see God take you further in the spiritual gift. And lastly, God promises his spirit in greater measure. So Joel 2, verses 28 and 29, it's like a wonderful promise regarding uh, as humanity comes closer to the end of days. It's, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. This is God's doing and in his own timing. Now, obviously, it's not 
exclusive. It's not like only the sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Sorry, you won't get dreams. It's only for the old men. That's not what it's talking about. It's just an outpour of the Holy Spirit where we see this popping up everywhere, regardless of your age, of how long you've been walking with the Lord, of how well you do your cuties. God's going to begin to pour out his spirit, and we're going to see it being manifest in the body of Christ as people begin to prophesy, dream dreams, see visions. All these things are going to become more and more commonplace. Now, John 13, 12, it also says, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me, me being Jesus, will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. So this is referring to what Jesus did in his years here on earth. We're going to be able to surpass that. It's not arrogance, but it's the promise that it's in God's word. So the kind of discernment even that Jesus had, we're going to see people with an even like crazier, like, you know, when Jesus was like, I know you have five husbands. I know the person you're living with right now is not your husband. You know, like even those kind of like words of knowledge, things like that, we're going to see it more and more happening in the body of Christ in the end times. It's really crazy to think like people being raised from the dead, like blind seeing, deaf hearing, all these things that we think it's like, no, that's just for Jesus or like maybe one of the 12, but that's about it. We're going to see God's people doing even greater works than these. Now, the purposes of the prophetic very, very straightforward, very simply, simplified and watered down. They are the prophetic gift. First of all, it edifies the body. It builds up the body. It's a gift that God has given his people in order to build up the body. It's not for your own personal ministry. It's not for your own, like, I'm going to make a name for myself, Susie the prophet. Like, that's not what you're going for. You're given a gift that you're supposed to serve the body of Christ with. So sometimes when we hold back in developing our own giftings, we're actually robbing the body of Christ of edification, sharpening, and insight that is actually supposed to be for the body of Christ, but God chose you as a vessel, as a channel to bring these things through. Second is the prophetic gift strengthens your relationship with God. I don't know how it can't strengthen your intimacy with God if you are on, like, the basis of, like, you speak and you hear him speak back and you're having in a constant dialogue and he's showing you different things and he's giving a heart to pray for different things and giving a vision for the things that are to come. I don't know how that would not enrich your relationship with the Lord. The prophetic gift does something, like, very, like, in the now. Like it takes something that you could very much keep a safe distance away from, but it brings it into your present. Like I remember the first time I ever received a prophetic word, and this is before I was very open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, the charismatic gifts of the Holy Spirit. I remember somebody just very gently, you know, saying like, hey, can I pray for you? And they, you know, shared this prophetic word. It wasn't like repent, you know, it wasn't like that kind of word, but it was like, this is how the Lord sees you. And this is the kind of joy that he has over you, and this is the picture that I see. And I remember something, like, shifted in me. Something came alive in me when I felt like I am actually seen by God, and God cares about me enough to give somebody else a prophetic vision regarding me so that they can build me up. I was so, like, floored by that, and it was, like, very much on point. Uh, But all that to say, it strengthened my relationship with God, for sure. And that also inspired me. In the same way that they built me up, I want to build others up as well. And so that was an encouragement for me to continue to um, build up this gift. And lastly, the prophetic gift glorifies God. This is a form of worship. It's something that we can use to really bring glory, bring focus, bring sharpness, insight, understanding to who God is before other people. Now, before we kind of finish up, there's some cautions that, that go with this. I'm not going to go super deep into this either, but there's some basic cautions that we need to take into account before we full on like launch into prophetic ministry. Um, And we're only going to go through three. One is always weigh what you receive against the Bible. The question that I always get from people is like, how do you know if it's you? How do you know if it's the Lord? And so the first litmus test for any prophetic word, any prophetic vision is always going to be weigh it with the Bible. If it's contradictory to the Bible, you have to throw it out. If it's not in line with God's character, you have to throw it out. So you have to weigh it against the Bible, not on how strongly you feel about it, not how clearly you received it, but you always have to weigh it against the Bible. Second is always make room for correction and error. None of us hear perfectly from the Lord. 
So we cannot be like, thus saith the Lord, Brittany, today you're going to have pizza after, the, you know, like you cannot, you cannot do it in such a way where you're not allowing for grace. There needs to be grace to be corrected and there needs to be grace for also somebody who's receiving to be able to receive it with grace. So in the giving, there needs to be grace. Like you cannot make it thus saith the Lord. And in the receiving, there also needs to be room for grace. The person who's receiving a word or receiving prophetic ministry, they have to be given the room to be able to take that word or take that vision or whatever. They have to be able to take it and weigh it. Take it and pray on it. And if it doesn't make sense to them, they should be able to shelve it. You cannot shove a prophetic word down someone's throat. That is called manipulation. That's called witchcraft. That's not the spirit of God. So uh, whenever we prophesy, whenever we receive prophecy, we want to make sure we're leaving room for correction and error. And lastly, always submit to the parameters set by the spiritual authority you're under. So all of us have spiritual covering. All of us are in different uh, maybe ministries or different um, spiritual communities, and we are called to submit to those parameters that that covering has set up. We cannot do our own thing. We cannot do the Lone Ranger Christian, the only one that can hear from God, and all the pastors are wrong, and all my community is wrong, and I'm going to do this prophetic. No, that's not how the prophetic gifting works. The prophetic gifting works best when it's under covering, when you allow people to speak into it and, and build, help you build up that gifting as well. So it needs to be in the context of community. You cannot do this Lone Ranger thing as a Christian. Now lastly, prophetic worship and creativity, it appears in in scripture in many different ways, but the the most clear picture of it is in the passage from Exodus chapter 31, when God is getting ready to uh, give the blueprints, you know, to build up the tabernacle, and what he does, what God does Instead of just giving blueprints and just giving the play-by-play, what he also does is he fills this guy called Bezalel, he fills him with the Spirit of God, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood, to work in every craft. So he actually empowers him through the Holy Spirit to do a craft, to do something that maybe... You know, in the mo- it's not like he's not preaching, like he's not, you know, worshiping before the Lord, but he's doing something unto the Lord that is worship unto the Lord, and it's done with anointing of the Holy Spirit. So this is the clearest instance in all of Scripture where God actually anoints somebody simply to be creative and to do something with excellence unto the Lord. So this is just a really, for me, when I first stumbled on this passage, I was like pretty, like, What? This is just like the, the, the passage of the bears coming in and mauling those kids. You know, like very random out of nowhere. Like, yeah, like that's how I felt when I first saw this. It's like, wow, God like, didn't think it would be a waste. He wasn't like, nah, only for the apostolic people, only for the preachers, only for Moses and certain guys. No, like he poured out his spirit on an artisan, on a craftsman, and he did it unto his glory. So before we unleash like the creative for today and the prophetic, I want us to – have you guys – I hope non, not many of you have seen it because this is a great clip. Have you guys ever heard of The Vision? It's like a, uh, a video put out by a ministry called 24-7 Prayer, and it's a video that was created around this poem that was written, almost like a spoken word that was created by, by somebody who, was, who felt like they were, they were both receiving from the Lord and also processing and envisioning what... Uh, a new generation of Christians would look like. And so they took the spoken word and they actually made a video out of it and and gave it even like images. And so I wanted to, for us to end with that tonight. And then after this, we'll pray and then we'll take some time uh, to just simply listen to the Lord.